Hey everybody, it's Jamaica, your neighborhood black girl with Endo, and today I'm telling the story about the first time I almost died. The first time I almost died, I was working for the government. Don't recommend. Mm -mm. Uh, not a good look. But I had pretty good health care, I thought. Um, now I know better. But at the time, I really thought I had great health care, and I was like, also, I wasn't sick, so I also was just like, yeah, I get to go to the doctor for free, you know, go Obamacare, and, you know, I was just kind of living my life and, you know, trying to be my best self, and um, then I started to have some really weird symptoms, and all of a sudden, I could not drive home. I was, like, literally falling asleep driving I used to live less than 10 minutes away from my job like I was not driving like a long commute but I could not keep my eyes open I also got out of work really early at like 3 p.m and I was like I need to go to bed like at 3 30 like when I get home like and this was unusual for me I'm a very like active on the go I like to be in and around and doing all kinds of stuff so it was like very odd for me. I'm not really a big sleeper. I, I have FOMO. I'm like, no, I gotta be up, gotta be out, gotta be doing it. And so my inability to stay awake was like really concerning for me. I was like, what's going on? Like, did I accidentally like drink some caffeine? I'm allergic to caffeine and it um, depresses my system. So it makes me really, really tired. So I was like going through all of the things I had eaten, I was like, "Some th this this apple must have caffeine in it." You know, I I, I bet you apple, <laughs> I bet you apples have caffeine in them. And I was going through this like whole crazy shebang where I was like looking at each thing and being like, "Caffeine, caffeine, caffeine, caffeine." <laughs> you know, like trying to figure out what was wrong with me. So I was young at the time. This was like five years ago now, maybe five or six years ago now. And, you know, I waited a little bit too long, a lot too long to go to the doctor and try to figure out what was going on. Cause I was like, I meant fatigue is like not really a symptom. Like I was just kind of like, I'm tired. Let me get some more sleep. But I was sleeping. Like I was like sleep. Like I would be like, it is 3.45 PM and wake up the next morning at like 6 AM. Like I was sleeping. And again, this was not my typical MO. I was someone that would go to work, go out and, you know, have a good time. And I was unable to like live my best life. And that is kind of, it was so sad for me because, you know, I was in my 20s. I was like, I'm trying to have a good time. And it was not, it wasn't happening. I was like, I need to sleep. So yeah, fatigue was the first symptom I had. And at the time, I didn't think it was a big deal. Uh, if you have extreme fatigue, just know that it is actually a, a really, really big indicator that there is something wrong with your body. If you're not a typical, like, very hard sleeper or you're not somebody that sleeps, 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 and you all of a sudden start doing that, go to the doctor. Yo. Do not wait like I did. I waited a long time, like almost a year. I waited to go and see the doctor. I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with me. I was wrong. Now you can tell from the title of this video how wrong I was. I literally almost died because I did not get myself to a doctor in a timely manner. Um, so let me tell you what happened. So I went to my PCP and, you know, she has known me for a little bit. So she was like, yeah, this is really weird. Like you started a new job, but it like should not be making you so, so tired. So I had been an educator for a long time. I switched to working for the government and, you know, it was a different schedule, but it was not like strenuous. Like it wasn't like, oh, you know, you carrying rocks and you know, I wasn't working construction or anything. It wasn't like I was like using my body so much more than I had been using it that maybe I would be tired. Like that's not it. So she ordered some lab work and these were the results. Let me tell you, I was beyond, beyond anemic. I was beyond anemic. And I had been... <laughs> 
<laughs> no. Again, if you are a young person, please listen to your body because it is trying to tell you different things. Your body really is trying to communicate with you. If you do anything else in your 20s, learn how your body operates. So I was kind of on the tip that my body like does what it does and I, I'm alive. So it's all good. That is a poor approach. Oh my goodness. Do not be that young person that's like, my body's doing that. Oh, sounds good. No, 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 no. And no, all the no, just no. I was beyond anemic to the point where I was like, I was unable to drive 10 minutes after work. My mom and dad saw me and they were like, what is going on? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, they, they were really concerned. I had been steadily getting worse and worse over the course of the year. So it wasn't a, you know, really quick decline. It was kind of a slow decline. But when I declined, I was like, unrecognizable. Like, I couldn't really operate like my normal self. I lost a lot of weight. I wasn't able to stay awake enough to eat. And, you know, it was, it was not good. So they went into, they were like, that's weird that you're super anemic. Like, are you bleeding? They're like, what's going on? And I thought, you know, I had been bleeding like a regular amount for, you know, a person with a uterus my age. And it uh, turns out I was horribly wrong and that everything that was going on with my uterus was atypical. And, but because, you know, I don't go around like, you know, studying other people's uteruses, I didn't really understand that what was going on with me was not normal. Not only was it not normal, it was like life threatening. Like they were like, what are you talking about? That's been going on. I was like, that's always been going on. They're like, what do you mean? That's always been going on. I was like, it's always been going on. I went to the doctor before and they were like, yeah, that happens. And I just kept it pushing. I was like, yeah, I guess it happens. I mean, okay. You know, I never, I wasn't thinking of myself as like a special case or anything like that. I was like, okay, you know, sometimes people with uteruses be bleeding and that's how it is. You be bleeding, I be bleeding. We all bleed forever, you know? <laughs> I mean, until we hit like menopause or whatever. Um, but, you know, I was kind of like, that's just what it is. Let me tell you guys, I was actually over bleeding. I was over bleeding and I was having significant pain. And the pain, I for some reason thought was normal. I was like, yeah, it's pain. He was like, what kind of pain? And I was like, it was like a nine. He was like, what? I was like, yeah, it's like a nine. He was like, isn't the scale like 10? I was like, oh, maybe it's five. He was like, no, it's 10. I was like, yeah, it's like, it's like a nine. <laughs> He was like, uh, excuse me, ma'am, um, nine out of 10 is like very high. What are you taking for this pain? I was like, oh, I don't do medicine. <laughs> oh, I laugh about it now because I have a hard time getting medicine um, that actually helps pain now. But so my mom is kind of old school. She really does not like the interventions of, you know, heavy medicine because she thinks it makes people reliable on the medicine instead of their body. Like she's like, if you mask your pain, you won't know if you're in pain. Like it's fine to like take your ibuprofen a couple times, you know, but if you're taking it every day, it's a problem, you know? And so I had learned to really deal with a lot of different pains and not really see it as an issue. Like I was just thinking of it as my body communicating with me, that's painful. And I was like, okay, I guess that's painful. That's good to know. And you know, they're like, no, that's painful. Do something about it. Do something about it. And I was like, hmm, for some reason that didn't occur to me. <laughs> it was honestly, it was ridiculous. Um, and like I said, I was in my 20s at the time. And so I was kind of young and I hadn't really like, again, I hadn't talked to a lot of people who had, you know, uterine problems. I hadn't talked to a lot of people or people didn't talk a lot about their uterus and like what was going on with it. So what was happening to me, I really just thought was what everyone was, you know, going through. Turns out that was incorrect. Um, so my PCP referred me to a um, specialty gynecologist. I went to that person and they specialized in um, robotic um, laparoscopic, basically surgeries um, for people who have different uterine problems. So this person really actually focused on fibroids and I hadn't, honestly, I hadn't really heard of fibroids at the time. I was like, I think I'm good. You know, I don't think I have any tumors like, you know, <laughs> and they were like, let's take a look. 
turns out my uterus was full of fibroids and the fibroids were literally sucking the life out of me literally sucking the life out of me i had to get them out i was like really scared but also really excited because i was like okay there's something wrong we can do something about that i'm a big problem solver i'm like oh there's a problem can be solved i i, I don't see a, an obstacle to solving problems i was like great okay Fibroids, what do we do about those? <laughs> She's like, let's do X, Y, Z. I'm gonna do it to it. <sighs> I was able to breathe a sigh of relief because I really was feeling the life being drained out of me, um, but there was a solution to the problem. And all this time while that was happening, I was still working, um, but my productivity was going down so low. I was getting all these demerits. I was getting written up like I was unable for real to do my job really well and it was getting to the point where I was like okay now I feel like I'm sick like now I I actually feel sick and it's manifesting in my life that I am sick I need to do something about it um so I talked with the doctor about the options and she recommended that I have a hysteroscopy um, check out my video on the different, you know, surgical options for your uterus, but the hysteroscopy is basically the least invasive that you can do. They go in through your vagina and they take things out. They went in through my vagina. They took things out. I woke up. I was in a daze. My partner was there and he was saying I was talking all this crazy stuff and I do not remember, but they drove me home and my recovery was not that long. It was about two weeks so or supposed to be about two weeks supposed to be <laughs> uh but it was a not two weeks i ended up having kind of a weird adverse reaction to the anesthesia um it made me groggy for multiple weeks it's you're supposed to come out of anesthesia 48 hours at the max later and i was still feeling the brain fog and everything like i was still kind of coming out of anesthesia two weeks later um, so from that, I took another two weeks off or a week and a half off, um, from work because I really wasn't healing really well. My brain was not really working as well as it could have been. And, you know, I didn't want to go back to work without, you know, being a hundred percent. Like I said, before I left, I had had a lot of productivity write-ups and, you know, I was trying to get back into the groove and prove that I was like a good worker, that I could do this good government job and, you know, I didn't want to be one of those people that was slacking off. <sighs> so, the best laid plans, as they say. Um, I went back to work after about three and a half, four weeks. Um, I started to feel a lot better. Everything I thought was going super, super well. Um, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, I was sick. Like, I, like now that I'm actually better, I was like legitimately sick. Like, I was like, um, and... I thought, I was like, this is amazing. Everything is cured. It is awesome. Um, I was, you know, so wrapped up in all of the bliss of feeling like I had been, you know, healed that I was kind of missing some of the cues that I was like not really healed. Um, that is until one night I woke up in the middle of the night from extreme pain. It was so, I'd never experienced anything like it before. Like I was asleep and then I was not sleep. I was not sleep and I was in agony. It was just, it was, I thought that it was something from the surgery. I like took a day off to go find out and they were like, you look fine. And I went back home and I tried to lay down again and the same thing kind of happened. I like was napping and I woke up from an intense amount of pain. I went back to the doctor. My doctor was actually off um, for, you know, the rest of the afternoon. So I talked to an, a different doctor and this doctor was an old school. He was an older doctor. He clearly was like, he was like Dr. Emeritus. Like he was there like, so, you know, looking around like, yeah, like what's good. And he, you know, came up to me. He was like, okay, you're here for an emergency appointment. I was like, yes, I'm here for an emergency appointment. I was actually here earlier. I have this extreme pain. Like, I don't really know what's going on. He was like, sit down, let me tell you something. He was like, I suspect that you have endometriosis. I was like, no, 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 I have fibroids. I was like, no, no, no. I was just diagnosed like a month ago. I have fibroids. Like, he was like, I was like, you know, I was like, I think it's just from the surgery. He was like, no, I think you have endometriosis. That's not something we can treat here. 
you need to go see somebody else. And I was like, um, excuse me, fool. Like, I know my body. Like, you can't tell me what to do and like all this other stuff. And I, mean, I obviously didn't say that to him. I just nodded and smiled. But I was kind of like, okay, but I'm a, she diagnosed me with fibroids. So, uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, old school friends actually know a lot of stuff and you really should listen to them. Um, so I went home. What he said stuck with me in my brain. I ended up Googling endometriosis. I had all of the symptoms and that started my journey to, you know, being treated. So thankfully, uh, I had that second emergency appointment and I was able to, you know, just get a spark of information that led me down a path to um, where I am today. Now, as you see that this is the first time that I'm almost dying, I do almost die a second time and it's actually a lot more intense. Um, check out my other video. I literally almost die um, right here. Um, you can click the link and it'll take you to that video. But, you know, as you can see, I'm still alive. All's well that ends well. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, thanks so much for watching. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to Black Girl with Endo.